Welcome back for part two of solving ratio problems. Now we're on resource number five, and for this one, it's example number two. We're going to once again use bar diagrams to solve ratio problems. During their family vacation, Marcus took 18 pictures on his cell phone. The ratio of the number of photos Marcus took to the number of photos his sister, Maribel, took is 3 to 4. Makes sense Maribel would take more photos. You ladies tend to be more artistic than we are. And half of them were probably duck face selfies, but that's okay. How many photos did Maribel take? That's the big question. Think about this. Is the number of photos Maribel took less than, greater than, or equal to 18? And how do you know? So what's your answer? Well, Marcus took 18. Eight it was a 3 to 4 ratio between Marcus and Maribel. That means Maribel had to have taken more than 18. So your final answer should end up being more than 18. With that in our little database to hold on to, we're going to start working on the problem. So here it loads, and it is ready. We're going to move through the slides to see how the bar diagram can be used to solve the problem. First thing they did is they drew a bar diagram. It broke down into four sections, and of those four sections, three of them belong to Mar Marcus, while four of them belong to Marable. Now they want you to take and complete the bar diagram by labeling the shaded sections, and we did that with the number of photos that Marcus took which is going to be 18. So let's see here. This one here should be what number? What did it say to do? They gave you the answer here, folks. We're going to put in the 18, and we're going to hit check. And it checked good. All right, excellent. The next thing it wants us to do is divide the number of photos Marcus took by 3. That way we're going to find out how many photos need to go in each one of those four boxes. So if you took the 18 photos Marcus took and divide it by three, you guys do the math, put your numbers in each one of those boxes there, and check it. I will give you a second to do that. All right, 18 divided by three is six. Six, six, six six and six. We'll hit our check button and once again we're totally rocking on here. Now we're going to use that di um, information to finish the question and find out how many photos Maribel took. There's four sections that represent the number of photos Maribel took. Each of them are six. Six times four is going to be 24. So right there you can see the final answer. Marable took 24 photos on their vacation. Pretty easy, cool stuff. But I don't think they're done because we've only done slide 204. So let's see what else they have for us. Next slide is our talk about it. How does a bar diagram indicate how many more photos Marable took than Marcus? Think about it for just a second. Pause the recording and write down a good answer to that. Okay, did you write down your answer? Well, go back to the question, how does a bar crap indicate how many more photos? Each one of these sections represented six photos. There's one section more that Marable took than Marcus. That section's worth six. Therefore, Marable took six more photos than Marcus did. We're going to have a check, which probably won't work. Let's see. Nope, it broke. Now we're going to take and use the double number lines and equivalent ratios to solve ratio problems. The manager of a small hotel determines it takes 30 loads of laundry to clean the towels and sheets. That looks pretty important. We're going to highlight that. 30 loads of laundry of the hotel rooms each day. A large bottle of laundry detergent contains 150 ounces. That looks pretty important too. And the label indicates that the bottle can clean 75 loads. 
The hotel has to do 30 loads a day. The bottle can clean 75 loads. Oops, I was going to make that a different color. There we go. And there's 150 ounces in the bottle. So it's 75 loads for every 150 ounces. That's important to remember because they're going to use that in making their double line, double number line. You can see this is broken down into five sections. The reason they chose five is because both 75 and 150 are easily divisible by five. If you divide 75 by five, you'd end up getting groups of 15, 15, 30, 45, 60, and 75. If you were to take and divide the 150 by 5, then you would get groups of 30, 30, 60, 90, 120, and 150. The val value of the bottom number on the number line that corresponds with the 30 loads that the hotel has to do every day is 60, so it's going to take 60 ounces of detergent. Check our answers. Da ding We got it. That's one way of skinning this cat. Now there's another way to skin the cat and the instructions the textbook gives are a little fuzzy. I'm going to show you their instructions and then we're going to go back and we're going to show you what it actually means, what, where this all came from, okay? So, for the next section they have, they took and used, and we're going to go back to the first slide, we're going to move through the slides and we're going to use what's called a proportion, where you've got two ratios that are equal to each other. 30 is to D as 75 is to 150, where 30 is the number of loads the laundry the hotel has, and D is the number of ounces that the hotel needs to use that day to wash their loads. 75 is how many loads the bottle, the, the bottle will do, and 150 is how many ounces of detergent the bottle has. Now they're going to do some strange voodoo stuff here, and I don't like what they're going to do to you. They all of a sudden come up with this number that says 75 divided by 2.5 is 30. That doesn't make a lick of sense to me. Where on earth does this divided by 2.5 here come from? I'm going to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to look at it on the, the white. And on my whiteboard, we want to know where that 2.5 came from. And to find out, we're actually going to work the problem backwards, which makes more sense. Instead of dividing 75 by some mystery 2.5, I'm going to take and divide 75 by 30. So 75 divided by 30. 30 goes into 7 zero times. 30 goes into 75 two times with 2 times 30 being 60. Subtract that out, you get 15 left over. Annex in your decimal and your zero. Your decimal goes up and your zero goes down. Now we can say 30 goes into 150 five times with five times 30 being 150 with nothing left over. Right there, 2.5 is where that mystery number came from, okay? They just worked it backwards. I don't know why. If it was me setting that up, I wouldn't have said 75 divided by 2.5. I would have said 75 divided by 30 equals 2.5. But now that we have that 2.5, we can take and divide 150 by it. And I agree with that statement. Divide 150 by the 2.5 to find the value of D. So let's draw a line to keep our work neat and organized. 150 divided by 2.5 and you can hear the noise maker down here. Now remember in dividing decimals you bounce the decimal outside the house to the wall, you bounce the decimal inside the house the same number of places to the right and you annex in zeros as needed the decimal goes up. 25 goes into 1 zero times, it goes into 15 zero times However, it goes into 150 six times, and 6 times 25 is 150. Subtract that, you get nothing left over, but wait, we've got a gap between our 6 and our decimal. That 0 has to come down. 25 goes into 0, 0 times. So our answer is the same one that we came up with the other way, 
that you're going to be able to work 60 loads you can see it's right here the 60 loads that you got to put in your answer right there easy math y'all can do this seems a little complicated particularly the way they showed it with that magic 2.5 but once you know where that 2.5 came from it's not really that hard for compare and con or talk about a section we're going to compare and contrast using a double number line and equivalent ratios which method might be more advantageous and why um hear me we rephrase that which method might be more advantageous to use if numbers are large well if numbers are large i'm all about doing the method three because if you think about it in method three that you can take and do a little bit of division a little bit more division boom you're done in method two excuse me method one right here this is slide two the double number line you had to do a whole lot of artwork you had to figure out how many even sections it divided into and then kind of lay it all out from that and figure out how it was going to fit for you to me this one here in the end although it looks like less work i think it's a lot more work than doing this right here is going to be but you may have a different opinion and that's entirely up to you moving on to resource number eight resource number eight is the last of our big resources to dig through in this lesson use double number lines and equivalent ratios to solve ratio problems and this one's going to be all about you guys the manager of a grocery store determined that the average of 480 jars of peanut butter are sold each week two cases of peanut butter contains 96 jars how many cases of peanut butter should the manager order each week can you solve this mentally without using any diagrams hmm, i can can you so let's take and break this down some method one use the double number lines you need to take and try and do this one on your own just a little bit and see what you can come up with just do this first top part of the slide and we will go from there okay pause your recording while you think about it all right so we have the double number line already drawn initially here with you got the cases on top and the number of jars on bottom so the top line represents the number of what cases the bottom line represents the number of what jars and we're going to hit our check button and all of that checks good so from here we're going to hit our next button and in that wow where on earth did all that come from well what they did is they worked this totally backwards from what we did before before we had the big number and we were trying to find a small part of it here we only know a small piece we know that two cases is equal to 96 jars of peanut butter and somehow we have to be able to get to 480 jars so what they did is they started doubling they said well 96 times 2 is going to be 192 96 times 3 is going to be 280 96 times 4 is going to be 384 and 96 times 5 is going to be b excuse me the 480. now you got to do the same thing on the top for the top you're going to do two times two is four two times three is six two times four is eight and two times five is ten so the top number line corresponds with 480 jars of peanut butter is how many cases well that is going to be the 10 cases that you see right here we hit our check button and da ding we got that answer right too now we're going to do the same thing only we're going to set it up using equivalent ratios and we're going to create or complete the equation that states two ratios are equivalent otherwise known as a proportion and we're going to let c represent the unknown number of cases a manager should use so what do we have well first off we have the number of 
jar of cases, which is going to be 2, is equal to 96 jars. And we also know that we need to get up to, I believe it was 480 jars total. For that, we're going to check it. Those parts check. Good. Next, we're going to move to the next slide, and we're going to say, now once again, I don't like where this comes from. They got this magic all of a sudden. 96 times 5 equals 480. And if we hadn't just done the other thing we did, you wouldn't know that. So instead, let's take a screenshot and figure out exactly where the 5 comes from. So to figure out where that 5 right here came from, we're going to take and divide 480 by 96. So that's going to be a little painful. Long division here. 480 divided by 96. Now, I know that 96 is not going to go into 4. I know 96 is not going to go into 48 either. But 96 will go into 480. I don't know how. I mean, wow. How's a person supposed to know stuff like this? But I have a trick that I figured out works good for me. In my brain, not on paper, but in my brain, I'm going to scratch out the last digit in each part. And I'm going to say, how many times does 9 go into 48? Well, I'm thinking 5, because 9 times 5 is 45. So I'm going to try 5 out in my problem, putting that 5 right here. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 9 is 45, plus the 3 from the 30 is 48. And lo and behold, that 5 is where they got that 5 right there from. Now, all you have to do, since you could say right here that 9 times 5 equaled 480, we can say that 2 times 5 is going to equal to C. So what is 2 times 5 going to equal to? Well, 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Therefore, C, the number of cases needed, is also going to equal to 10. And we're going to take and go back to our slideshow. And we're going to keep moving forward until we can put it in. The same thing here they have. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. So C equals 10. How many cases should that manager order? 10 cases. Check it. Boom. You are done. Easy math. Kind of. Move to our next slide. Our talk about it. Can you use scaling and a table of equivalent ratios to solve this problem? Absolutely, because isn't that basically what we were doing in the double line graph? When we were to take, let's go back to one, two, right here. Isn't that really scaling where they just took an increase by um, doubling and tripling and whatnot all the way up? All this is is scaling right here, guys. It's just written a different way. It's written on double number line. So with that said, number five is probably not going to work for us. Nope, not going to work. That means we've only got a few resources left to go, which we will finish in part three of this lesson.